Hello, boys and girls, comic book fans of all ages. Welcome back to another episode of Comic Book Jesus. I am Wild Bill, your host, and the founding father of the show, sitting right over here. What's up, everybody? I am Pete. Hope you're all doing well, and again, happy 2022. Uh, we've got another episode of Inside the Cover for you. And if you've been following kind of all along the past couple of months, uh, many of you know that I've been doing a pretty decent job of getting like old Avengers. Uh, sub one issue 100 over the last like kind of eight months or so so uh, i over the last couple days i read a couple more of them i figured we'd share them with you so this is going to be kind of part one of a three-part series on these particular three issues so stay tuned uh you know over the next couple weeks to see part two and three but we're going to start here with issue number 29 of the avengers titled this power unleashed so a lot going on here on this cover right i mean you got uh Geez, you got Giant Man, although we'll learn in a second that he's changed his name. You got Swordsman, you got Power Man, you got the, look, Black Widow. Is that the John Bushima color? No, it's Don Heck, actually. Don Heck. Yeah, Don Heck, who did all of the pencils. And so it's not one. John Bushima. <clears throat> no, not yet. Okay. Not yet. So, Don uh, Heck. Don Heck. So, yeah, this was, uh, Don Heck was on this series for quite a while. It was basically the same team. It was Stan Lee, Don Heck. Uh, Frank Giacoya on inks and uh, lettering by Sam Rosen. This was a okay. pretty, pretty consistent team throughout this, this particular run. So we start off here. We've got the team of Cap, Wanda, Quicksilver, Hawkeye, and then this, this marks the return of the Wasp and Giant Man, although if you're right off the bat, they tell us that uh, he's taken on a new name. He's got a new costume. He's now being called Goliath, but he actually... Uh, he went through some kind. They were in the previous issue. They were fighting something. Something happened to him, and he started to shrink back down in size. Because of course, Giant was wearing Man, off. Is yeah. Ant Man right? It's Ant Man. Became him. mediocre. Yeah. So, but he stopped shrinking at ten feet, and he stuck. That's it. So yeah. So it's like in other words, he went from like twenty five feet to ten. Now he can't get to regular size, and he's now he's like passed out. So like they're all freaking out. Like you know, what do we do with him? What do we do with him? And of course, the wasp in, in traditional wasp, Quicksilver. Why is he still so still, so silent? Tell me, please. I must know. She's such a whiny person. Oh my god, it's crazy. So anyway, I'm just sitting here thinking. You're thinking. This kind of same story like Avengers one forty. Kind of. Yeah? Yeah. Could be. There's uh, shrinking issues Yeah. with uh, Yellow Jacket. Ah, uh, yes. Remember? Yes. I okay. Know. I remember what you talking about. Yeah. Well, he had a problem, but he was getting bigger. Right. Right. Okay. So now it's at the opposite end, right? So, yeah. So, but this was first. Yeah. This was way first. So here, they're, they're trying to figure out what to do with him on the next page. So they're like, we got to call a doctor. We got to call a doctor. Uh, they remember, she remembers, I remember Thor telling us to contact the doctor, Don Blake, in case of an emergency. Like, we better call him right away. But of course, they can't get a hold of him. I got to go back to my tangent. Yeah. Okay. See how they're all connected, the storylines? Yeah. Like, it, they use the storyline one way. Ten years later, we use the same storyline and go the other way. Of course, way. I mean, with a know, different yeah. guy. I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> no, that's, but you're absolutely right. But, I mean, how many times have we seen that? We probably should do an episode on that one of these days about how many times they've reused <sighs> similar storylines. That's, that's crazy. a lot of homework. Yeah. So, so I got, I got to get this. So they're like minutes later. His answering service. So they're trying to call Don Blake, who of course we know. Won't his answer floor, the phone. Right. His answering <laughs> service says he's out of town. Gee, no surprise. He's in Asgard. He's always take, out of town, right? Can't take a message. They don't know when he'll be back. Then they have a box that says, and that's putting it mildly. This makes no sense to me. He's on the way from Earth and Asgard at this very minute. Well, is he on the way from Earth or from Asgard? And how long does it take? Like, okay, which one is it? He, you can't be on the way back. Isn't from he Earth traveling and Asgard. faster than the speed of right. light? Right. Yeah, how long does it take him? I mean, light from the sun to the Earth takes about like nine minutes. So if he's traveling faster than the speed of light, he should have been here in like about what four minutes. Right. And you heard this shit about an hour ago when you called. <laughs> he should have been here by now. Where are you, Thor? I mean, Doctor Blake. Don't want. to... Ruin your cover. So get right here. Whoops. Yeah, so. <laughs> here. so anyway, they get, get out of jail free. <laughs> so they, they find another doctor, Doc Carlson. They get him to come over. So he comes over. And how stereotypical is this? The doc comes over. Of course, he's smoking a pipe. Why is it that all doctors back in this day were smoking pipes? Well, there was a customary thing. Smoking was part of American culture. Like I know, but why do the doctors always smoke pipes? And all these, the, all the doctors always Cause that, the Yeah, because it represents like the intellect. Like, like Sherlock Holmes, yeah. The yeah. intellect smokes a pipe. I guess. 
I guess. You know, your GI grunts, they were smoking cigarettes, Lucky Strikes. You know, your gangsters had cigarettes. Yeah, yeah. that's true. That's true. A different time, I guess. So he gets there, and he goes, where's the pageant? And, and Cap goes, Major Carlson, I knew you wouldn't let us down. You'll find an unusual case. Have you ever heard of Giant Man? The Quicksilver is like, he's Giant Man no longer, Cap. He changed his name to Goliath, remember. Of course, then. Get he's it the right. To chief. <laughs> so he goes and looks him up, right? And he, he looks he, him up. He, he looks at him. There's he, no he, Giant he Man takes here. takes a look at him. And then <laughs> finally, uh, Henry Pym gets up and he's like, oh, what's happened? How long have I been out? And then they tell him the bad news that the doc realizes he's shrinking. Uh, he must never attempt to shrink down to normal size. Let's if he did, him. it would surely mean instant death. You yep. wrote the story, right? This is exactly. <laughs> His body couldn't take such a strain again. He must remain 10 feet tall for the rest of his life. So meanwhile, they tell him this and he... Time out. 10 feet tall? Yes. Hey, put him on a basketball team. Hey, I'm open. I'm open. <laughs> Go ahead. He's got a career, right? For, yeah. Forget, forget Goliath. Swish. The Avengers, right? yeah, exactly. Swish. <laughs> so in the meantime, so they're trying to tell him to break the news to him, right? Hey, so 10 let's, foot. Let's cut to now our scene changes as we visit the foreboding <laughs> Far East. Let's go somewhere else. Yes. Cliffhanger? Yes. Well, no, for now. So we're going to go to the Far East. That's another thing that happens in comics a lot. You're right there with this bad news for Goliath. Right, I got it right? Yep. Giant Man? Yeah, Goliath. He's now Goliath. Let's get it correct here. Yeah, yeah I don't want to piss him off. <laughs> Goliath. <laughs> got bad news for you, but... Hold we're on. Going, we're going to the Far East. We're going to the Far East, right? Which, Another story. So again, now we're going to let's catch up with Black Widow. Let's catch up with Black Widow. So I'll show you real first. This thing. happens a lot in comics. I got to read this to you because this is absolutely classic. And of course, this is 60s, right? This is, yes. This is 1966, right? So you know, things were a little different back then. So we got so, a subplot. So she's in the Far East, right? So obviously Ooh. we know Black Widow. So obviously we know she's dealing with some, you know, uh, from shady wars, characters. China, Japan. Because we know, had a war whatever. going on back then. Right. Vietnam so, War. Yes, exactly. So he, so the one head guy, and of course he's got this big, you know, like cigarette holder and all this kind of stuff. He's 50. He looks Asian, but, you know. They kind of make him like the Mandarin without a headgear. Exactly. So he goes, so he's talking to, to he goes, has Madame Natasha been completely brainwashed, Dr. Yen? And then Dr. Yen goes, I saw Excellency. <laughs> I mean, literally, yes, I saw. That's like perfect. <laughs> that perfect you slander of a character. Exactly. Stereo- yes. Perfect stereotypical slander. Yeah, exactly. Of a character. So then he goes. Then you may approach me, woman. Right, and and he goes. You who were known as the Black Widow, who were once our greatest female agent, you have been punished for betraying us. You allowed your decadent feelings for the one called Hawkeye to make a traitor of you. But now that you have been taught the error of your ways, it is time for the Black Widow to serve us again. Unless you would re- prefer to return to the prison cell. And she goes, no, I shall never rest until we have enslaved the free world. Excellent. Dr. Yen's brainwashing never fails. So now, cut back to Avengers Mansion. And, uh, He'll be 10 feet tall. And, he's, and, and Goliath is 10 feet tall. He's freaking out, busting things. Because he's like... I, caps like, I, I, get a hold of yourself. Exactly. Yeah, you got to calm down, Goliath. I mean, look, giant Hank, man. I mean, Goliath. He wrote the script. Look, <laughs> Hank, you've got to get a hold of yourself. I know how you feel, but... You can't know how I feel. Nobody can. I do. I'm doomed to spend the rest of my life in a world that's too small for me. <sighs> Ten feet tall. What do you want, dude? Cue uh, Marvel masterpiece ads. Dude, I was like the second shortest kid in school growing up. Get over it, man. You know. <laughs> get over it. So, uh, so he find he goes back out. He, he he can't get through to him, and he so he goes back out. and He goes. He's taking it awfully hard, Jan. Perhaps if you talk to he him. He left. She goes. I was afraid of this. I'll go in at once. So she goes in, and he's gone. Right. So he's walking down the street, feeling sorry for himself. He didn't hit his head on the door. On the didn't way hit his, No. Yeah. Somehow he didn't <laughs> escape. So then we go and we see this scene where this woman is getting daggers thrown at her in like a sideshow or something like that. And of course, we find out it's the swordsman. So if you guys have been paying attention to our last bunch of episodes, we did a, a show a couple of weeks ago on issue 19 where the swordsman made his debut. We learned in that issue that he was once the uh, the kind of uh, circus side circus sideshow show. guy, but he also found and trained Hawkeye Clint Barton, right? So he's kind of he was kind of like his his mentor, uh, his mentor, right? So the black Black Widow finds the swordsman because obviously she's putting a team together because she wants to go kill the Avengers. So she introduces her to Jacques the swordsman down at the bottom there. Introduces herself. I am Black Widow. And next thing they know, um, we cut back to the Avengers mansion, right? And we've got uh, Hawkeye and Cap 
talking here because of course well, Hawkeye's never around, right? So Cap always has to go find in him, right? So he does that. He, he explains what's going on with Goliath and all this kind of blah blah blah, and then uh, he lets Hawkeye know that his intelligence has let him know that Black Widow is en route to the U.S. And of course, Hawkeye is still madly in love with Black Widow, and he's going to do oh, whatever he can. Oh, uh, yeah, right. <laughs> this is gonna, I gotta go. I gotta go find her. I gotta go find her. So he basically tells Cap to blow off. I'm going to go find Natasha. Right? For some Hershey's kisses. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that he is, and of course, what does he do? He goes back to her old headquarters because I guess the Black Widow had a headquarters here, and but, lo and behold, he walks in, and there she is. So he's like, you know, he's all excited because he's like, oh, cool, you know, we can get back together. And he's noticing she's acting kind of cold towards she him. She is Russian cold. <clears throat> yes, exactly. Uh, and he Russian goes, Cold War. We have company here, my um, affectionate archer. He goes, company who? And who's there? But the swordsman back in his in his uh, costume and Power Man. Ah. Power Man's back. So of course he's like, uh, so that's how you're holding you. So they're holding you captive. Well, I won't let that happen any longer. Take cover, Natasha. I'll handle this. Meanwhile, because he, he's, he's like, so nope. he's so stupid and they're allies. He, he, yeah, he's not even thinking that she brought them there, right? Yeah, so, they're all allies. Yeah. So then you're the enemy, Hawkeye. So he's like, so he's like, stay back. You're in danger. I'll help you. And she goes, there's no danger, not to any of the Avengers. The swordsman and Power Man are my allies, as you shall be also. You mean you join forces with them against the Avengers? No, they have joined the Black Widow. So she's trying to recruit Hawkeye into their little team. He's like, no way. So you guys, something's up here. So then, nope. you know, the battle ensues. So then we've got Hawkeye taking on basically the three of them. So, but first, he's going through uh, the swordsman. Yeah, <laughs> so exactly. Doc gets Sp- shot in the back. Rock clang. So here <laughs> we have all this stuff. So meanwhile, while all this is going on, of course, Cap told the wasp to go follow him as the wasp and don't let him know uh, you know that she's there so she or she is in the background so she's as the wasp she's watching this fight taking place she's like I better go back to Avengers headquarters to, to tell you know Cap and the rest of them but meanwhile what happened to that little radio transmitter thing couldn't she just like call and be like right they used that in the other issue right no. so yeah oh click 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 available <laughs> yes, the wasp always needs help, right? <laughs> but here, of course, she's as the wasp, and this a bird starts following her, and the bird wants to eat her, so she's got to trick. The bird. <laughs> she looks like a little fly. I know, right? So she, what she does is she tricks the she she tricks the bird. She goes in throughout his beak and grabs a hold, and the bird lands on a branch. She turns back into normal size. The branch breaks, and what does she do? She falls down, and she's unconscious. Oh, she hurt herself? She yeah. fell out of the tree? She fell out of the tree because well, she turned to normal size on the branch, fell, and boom, now she's out unconscious. Well, she's kind of like a superhero that did something super stupid. She's she's lame. She's always... I mean, the wasp is like... So oh, now man. she's down and out, like so man down. So she's down and out, so she can't tell Cap that... that uh, oh, and meanwhile, I didn't tell you in all, in all this. Quicksilver and... Yeah. I fell out of the tree. I fell out of the tree. Anybody. Please help. I need help. <laughs> During yeah. all of this, I, f- I forgot to mention it, uh, uh, Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver, both of who have been sensing that their powers have been diminishing, decided to go back to their homeland in hopes that they will get their powers recharged. <laughs> While they're mutants, right? That doesn't usually happen, but they don't know why it's going on, so... <laughs> they need a, need a recharge cord. I, I know, right? Okay. So they're not involved here, right? So they're, so So meanwhile, so because Janet... The, the Wasp can't get back to headquarters to alert Cap. The bad guys decide to go to Avengers headquarters to do what needs to be done. Take, so, of course... Take them on. Take them on. So, they, they're they at the bottom. you got Power Man and the Swordsman breaking into Avengers headquarters. Cap's like, I thought we defeated you once before. So, boom, here we go. The big battle ensues. we got Swordsman first telling Power Man to lay back. I can handle it. Of course, that doesn't happen. So, then Power Man jumps in and he, uh, he grabs Cap right here. And basically squeezes him out, knocks him out, right? So there we have it. So now we've got, uh, so Cap is imprisoned. Then they cut back to uh, Quicksilver and Wanda, who was, you know, they're like, oh, you know, trying to figure out what's going on with them. Trying to recharge. It doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> Cap, of course, Cap has his little radio transmitter. So if he's doing what's supposed to be done, right? So they hear that. But of course, they're back in Romania or wherever they came from. I don't remember. 
So then the Wasp, who finally wakes up, gets back to headquarters. It's a battle zone, and nobody's there. So she basically... So now we call, we get Quicksilver and Cap come back. So I mean, Quicksilver and Wanda come back. And uh, where is everybody? I think I jumped ahead. I told you that, uh, you? that, that Cap and, I mean, Wanda and Pietro go back to... Yeah, their, so their that, homework. Ha- that happens later on, I forgot. It happens later All on. Right. Yeah, I'm sorry. So you did a little foreshadowing. I did a little foreshadowing. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, that hasn't happened yet. As you'll notice throughout here, quick... I'm going to point this out now. I got a little... It's what happens when you read three issues in a row. Um, you get mixed up on which issue happens. So you notice here that, that Wanda gets basically overtaken pretty easily by the swordsman. And then Quicksilver is not running as fast, and he gets overtaken pretty easily. So that's like foreshadowing like what's going on with them. So then, uh, but who comes busting back into the scene but Goliath, who I guess is tired of crying, you know, over spilt milk here. And he's like, let me get back into action. So he busts into the, into the room. And ten feet tall. And ten feet tall, and he's now fighting... The swordsman and power man, and then uh, we get the wasp comes in and she starts laying her little wasp stingers on Black Widow, and who I, I gotta say I really hate this Black Widow costume. Uh, it's just really lame. Really That's lame. the old one, That's the, the original. One. Yeah, it's the original. Not like the one in the Daredevil issue. Much better. The oh second yeah, one, yeah, 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 yeah. With no mask and just the the, the, the red hair, the red hair, and the, yeah, much better. So then of course Cap breaks She's out. Got black hair there, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So Cap breaks out, Hawkeye shows up, now the big battle ensues, uh, everybody's here. So this is actually a pretty good action issue. And, uh, but of course, in the end, Hawk, so the, the bad guys are getting ready to, to escape. And Hawkeye could act, can actually do something about it. But because Black Widow is like at the head of the line where they're escaping, he can't bring himself to shoot. So they actually wind up escaping. And Hawkeye now is all busted up about it because he's like, it's my fault they escaped. And then, of course, they're back to Goliath being, you know, uh, all mopey and stuff about, uh, you know, where he's at and all the time. And, uh, of course, this is a great last line. So he goes, so Janet's like, Hank, Hank. He goes, I'll be all right. You go ahead. I'll catch up later. I couldn't fit in the car anyway. And Cap goes, the most powerful Avenger, and yet he's also the most tragic. And then Hawkeye, uh, Quicksilver goes, doomed to spend a lifetime like Gulliver among the Lilliputans. Spend. Spend as much as you hear. <laughs> take, here's, take my Marvel Comics credit card. <laughs> yeah. So uh, so that's kind of where that one leaves off. And hold on, we got a couple of ads for you. we got, uh, if you want to go fishing, there you go. If you want to be strong like uh, the big muscle guy. Um and then also, if you want to uh, do Norman something. Rockwell. Norman Rockwell. So basically, so this leaves off uh, where the bad guys escape, but don't worry, they come up in next issue. And then uh, also, we've got uh, the giant, the Goliath, the, the, the Goliath thing going on. So that kind of continues in the next issue. And actually, His this mental story, saga. Yeah. So <laughs> this story goes on for two more issues. Two so more we're, issues. We're going to cover good. those in future uh, episodes. So, so you'll have to too. stay tuned. That's right. So, uh, but and, for now, then, issue twenty nine. Go check it. It's a really good one, actually. It's a really good, nice one. cover. Nice, yeah. These covers are all really well done. So we'll get to these other two issues eventually. That's right. So stay tuned over the next couple of weeks for more inside the covers. A look at the Avengers number thirty and thirty one. That's coming, and uh, we've, we've got, got more stuff for us. Yeah. yeah so nice. stay tuned. As always, we thank you for being here. We thank you for your comments. Uh, as always, thank you for sub- subscriptions and tell your friends about us. We appreciate it. That's right. And uh, as always, click the notification bell to be kept in the loop every time we have a new video out. And click that like button. Thank you so much. I'm Wild Bill, and for Pete, this is Colin Bookies saying we'll see you next time. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.